This is an explanation of how to do tuning and matching on the V500 widebore. Uh, it's important to do tuning and matching before long heteronuclear experiments such as an HSQC or an HMBC. First thing you need to do is get the computer configured correctly. In order to do that, you want to put in your sample. So you would eject the dummy sample and then put in your sample. And if you're running at another temperature, you want to make sure the instrument is at the temperature that you're running at. The next thing you want to do is to load an experiment. Let's do the HSQC, so I'm going to click on that. And then I want to double click on the HSQC. And then I want to come over here once it has updated so that the experiment is the HSQC. Like that. I want to go to the command line and I want to type SU. The reason I'm doing that is we need to configure the channels so that the channels are at the right frequencies because some experiments will have channel 1 be carbon and channel 2 be proton and some experiments will have channel 1 be proton and channel 2 be carbon and uh, those will affect uh, the way that we would tune the instrument. So for what I'm going to show you later we want it on an HSQC where channel 1 is protons and channel 2 is carbon. So um, that's done now after we've done setup, and now we can go over to the magnet and continue to do the tuning and matching. Okay, now that we have the software set up correctly, we can come over to the magnet itself to continue the tuning process. Now there's two channels. The red channel is the proton channel, and the blue channel is the X channel, which typically is tuned to carbon, so I'm going to call it the carbon channel. So this is where the signal is detected, and this is where the signal goes into the probe. In order to tune the channel, we have to change the cables. So I will show you how to change the cables for the proton channel first. So to do that, what I want to do is I want to take the proton channel probe connection here and put it onto the tune interface where it says probe. You want to push the connection on and turn it so that it locks in. And then I want to take the proton output where it says output here and put it onto the tune output. And then I want to switch the channel to the number that was set up in the software previously. So currently we have it set for channel 1 is protons. And then it should be displaying a number here. Finally, this attenuation the larger this number, the more sensitive the interface is. So if I go to a smaller number, we'll see smaller numbers here. So 9 is the most sensitive. OK, so we see something like 81. That's not perfectly tuned. The smaller this number is, the better uh, tuned it is. So to, to tune it, we need to adjust the knobs on the probe over here. There's two sets of knobs. This side is tuning and matching for the protons, and this side is tuning and matching for the carbon. If you look at the bottom of the probe, they're labeled. It says X, X T and M, and H T and M. So I'm going to tune the proton side. So I'm going to start out by adjusting the matching knob, and I'm going to look at the tune interface here. As I adjust the matching knob, I want to minimize the number. Okay, it's getting bigger, so I'm going the wrong way. I'm going to go the other way. So the number is getting smaller, still getting smaller, now it's getting bigger again. So I'm going to go back to the minimum, somewhere around there, and now I'm going to turn the tune knob some direction. So I'm going to, and you have to remember which way you tune it, I'm going to tune it, turn it one direction, and now I'm going to go back to the match knob and try to find the minimum again. Okay, that's much worse. So the, I turned the tune knob the wrong way. So now I'm going to go back to the tune knob and turn it the opposite direction that I did previously. Okay, it's getting better. Oh, it's much better now. So I'm going to go through to about the minimum and maybe a little bit past. And then I'm going to go back to the match knob and adjust the match knob again. And it's getting smaller. That's good. And we're going to find the minimum. Okay, that's the minimum. It's getting worse again. So I'm going to go back close to that minimum. Now I'm going to go back to the tune knob, and I'm going to continue turning it the same way that I did. Now these turns are very, very small. 
I may have gone much too far. It's barely touch, touching it as far as turning it. So I'm going to adjust the match knob again. And yeah, I went too far. So now I'm going to go back to the tuning knob, turn it the other way again. Basically, you have to iteratively adjust the tune and the match back and forth, back and forth to try to find the global minimum. And the minimum will depend on your sample, but for an organic sample, you should get it, be able to get it down close to zero on the protons. Uh, I went way too far. I'm getting there. Okay, two, that's probably good enough. Okay, now we can tune the carbon channel. So to do that, I need to change the cables. So I'm going to put the proton cable from the probe back on the proton channel. And I'm going to put the tune output back on the proton channel output. And then I'm going to take the carbon channel probe and put it on the probe connection for the tune interface. And I'm going to take the carbon channel output and put it on the tune output. And then I want to change the channel to number two because that's how it's set in the software. And then I'm looking at the tune interface again, so I see something like 44. So I can go to the carbon tune and match, and I'm going to start with the match, and I'm going to try to minimize the number. That's getting pretty good. Okay, that's about as good as I can go. So now I'm going to adjust the tune a little bit. And then I'm going to go back to the match and try to see if I can do better. Yes, I did a little better. I'm going to go back to the tune. So there's a single optimum that depends both on the tune and the match. Ideally, they would be independent, and then it would be very easy to adjust them. But unfortunately, the two interact. So as you improve one, it's going to make the other one a little bit worse, and so forth. But you want to make the overall number, number as small as possible. And two to three is pretty good, again. So that's good enough. So I'm, now I'm going to switch the channel back to zero, which means that the tune interface is off. And then I'm going to put the cables back on to their appropriate places. So the probe goes back on the carbon channel of the probe and the tune output go back onto the carbon output. So now we're done tuning.